that they're beginning to set the market. Uh, when, you know, when you have a lot of them, you, you can't, in normal appraisal practice, can't ignore it. Yeah. That was kind of my question, which is, could you kind of skirt it around the big fish, which is San Jose? Because in certain, you know, school districts, say Eastside Union, where are you, do you have any sort of estimate of where short sales and REOs may be affecting assessor role? Yeah, that, uh, all of the places I mentioned. Gilroy, uh, Mor Morgan Hill, East San Jose, Central San Jose, in some cases, Milpitas are the are the hardest hit areas. Not South San Jose, because that's part of the East Side Union. Oh yeah, the Blasphem Valley, all those good spots. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is it is what it is, and and we will and we will look at that if we see a lot. I mean, I don't do this stuff, but I'm I'm a certified appraiser because I passed the test, but I'd be dangerous if I ever did an appraisal. <laughs> uh, so we will look at that, and if there's a substantial number of short sales or or foreclosures in a geographic area, I, I just kind of mentioned the ones that, that are very obvious. I mean, Gilroy's upside down. It's upside down, which is terrible. Probably more houses upside down there than there is houses, you know. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering if somebody missed the deadline and it wasn't and their home wasn't proactively uh, reduced, mm -hmm. can it be retroactive for the following year? It, well, you have to file an appeal in that case by September fifteenth. Okay, if somebody you, failed to do that. Sorry. Then we're in the hospital. Yeah. Yes, it's a technical I term. So go ahead. Quick <laughs> question. Can you is there, do you have any specific thing on Willow Glen? which is a part of the San Jose area? More I don't. I'm, all, okay. Obviously, the people in my real property division do, but, but I don't. So they buy a house, so a house sells two years ago, or three years ago, for $800,000. Mm -hmm. And then, for some reason or another, not necessarily a short sale or anything, for some reason or other, they need to sell, and they sell it on the open market for $600,000. Mm -hmm. And so, it's got the taxes for the July to December and the January to June period, <laughs> still sit in that 800 plus perhaps 2% a couple right. of times. So the people that buy it today, and that taxes is collected for the whole six months through the end of June, how does that get reappropriated? Do Does the buyer do back some money? Well, how does that work? Yeah, it's a good question. Good question. It's a very good question. Um, you know, we, we, hope, <laughs> we hope that that the tax issue would be solved in escrow, but uh, we will work those as fast as we can, uh, but always pay your taxes even if you know it's, because the tax collector, see most people don't know that the assessor is not the tax collector and the tax collector is not the assessor. They think we're one and the same. <laughs> and the tax collector I have found to be very rigid around the rules. Uh, and, that's, oh, and the clerk of the board. You missed the September 15th tough luck. You, you, you know, you, uh, but also I have a meeting, I think tomorrow with the tax collector. And you, you don't need to uh, say this outside this room because what I'm finding is that if you're due a refund, you can wait more than a year to get the refund. Oh my God. And uh, we're, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, fairly contentious meeting, I think, tomorrow around this. Uh, I, I will help her get more resources uh, if, if we can, but the point is, is that people don't know that. They think it's us. The assessor gave me a reduction. Where, where the hell is my refund? Uh, and after a certain time frame, of course, it's a refund with interest. So, um, I mean, the, listen, the county has a $60 million budget gap. And it's going to be really painful uh, on a lot of services. But I think, you know, if, if the county's interested in revenue, let me give you an example. I am very performance oriented, and we measure everything. So I can tell you the cost of a residential appraisal that's done by direct enrollment. I can tell you the cost of a residential appraisal done, uh, uh, assessment done by an appraisal. I can tell you the cost of a, of a retail reassessment, uh, industrial reassessment, the cost of a class A audit of major corporations, and the average revenue that's generated. When I took office in 1995, our total assessment role, that is the value of all real and business personal property, was $115 billion. 
The roll I closed in July 1st, 2008 was 303 billion. So we've had a significant growth. So uh, two years ago, uh, we did 99.6% of all of our widgets, audits, appraisals, enrollments, whatever. Deeds, well, 99.6% of all the things that we were required to do within that one year uh, cycle, assessment cycle, were done. A year later, we did 97.3%. And last year, we did 95%. Because I lost 52 positions out of 240 uh, over the previous two years with budget cuts. So I went to them and I said, you know, and, and so, and so, and the reason for that is a lot of the properties, you know, we used to close everything. Well, 5% doesn't sound like much from 99% from to 95%. It doesn't sound like much, but on a $303 billion assessment roll, it's a hell of a lot of assessed value and therefore a hell of a lot of revenue. So I went to the county executive and I said, look, this has to stop. My job solely is to close the assessment roll with everything done with accurate values as best they can be. And I said, so here's what I'm going to do. We, we used to be able to start working in the first half of the year on, the, on transactions that had occurred in the first half of the year for next year. Last year we had thousands of properties that didn't get on the assessment roll. So I said, if you don't stop uh, cutting people in my office, and not only that, give me two additional positions for commercial and industrial appraisers. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around to every Sandy Council. I'm going to put, you know, $100 million shopping center that didn't get on the assessment roll up on the screen on a PowerPoint and a, and a $200 million industrial property. And I'm going to go to every Spacey Gate <laughs> school district and I'm going to show these pictures and I'm going to say, this is what didn't get on the assessment roll. It, it's not that you lose the revenue, you just don't get it until the next cycle. And uh, he said, time out, help. Uh, so he's going to give me two additional commercial and industrial appraisers. <laughs> so we'll be able to handle that. But the same thing applies to the tax collector who needs to have uh, additional staff as well. Wayne, so and I, then Nancy, and Richard. So I'd just like down. to restate the last question. So therefore, if you sell a property at a price which is less than the currently appraised value for Assessed. the current taxes, Assessed. the Assessed, Assessed value, yeah then uh, the supplemental tax bill will be a credit proactively by the county. They don't have to do anything to get right. it. Right, but Thank the you. problem is getting the money can from take the tax, tax collector can be problematic. Who's next? Nancy. I had a question. You said that you were, um, a, you were looking at the values by school district. I live in Almaden. The schools there in, in that valley are excellent. Mm -hmm. However, they're in San Jose Unified, which isn't quite as good. Are you going to be looking geographically within? Like, San Jose Unified is so huge, it's, I think, 40 miles. Right, and, so and it covers the east side, yes. The answer is yes. For the San, San, San Jose Unified, we look at different segments of that, of that market. Last question, Richard. Hi, Larry. Hi. Larry and I had a discussion a few months ago, and I wanted to ask you, Larry, after done more research, what would you recommend to this group here, these realtors, on confirming square footage? Because the assessor has a certain number, and it's uncovered that the city has a different number on the <gasps> permit. Could you kindly explain or provide some helpful hints on how yeah. to confirm square footage? We, we don't. We are By property characteristics, right? which you can buy. You cannot depend. The law says you cannot depend upon the accuracy of property characteristics. The older the properties, the less likely they are to be accurate. Um, and, and sometimes, I mean, here's why that happens. Let's say you have a subdivision, okay? And the, the developer says, tells the city and then tells us that a 2,200 square foot home is gonna be on that lot, okay? So that's what we would record. And then a, a buyer comes along and says, I, I, I want that house, but I want it old. And over here and so they put it over here and they they replace it with a 2400 square foot house Th things like that can happen so you know I and, and and if you know that our property characteristics in the are are wrong let us know I mean I had a friend of mine 
call up.